What's going on YouTube family? Welcome to Automotive Life, my name is Lucky, and today we're gonna to be talking about how YouTubers and professional athletes are able to get exotic car loans right after they hit a bunch of money. Now, it's not as glamorous as what you're thinking. There's a lot of shady characters involved, a lot of really high interest loans, and a lot of really bad stuff that gets people into debt. We're gonna explain all that stuff and show you the darker side of the automotive industry. And we're also gonna give you some information, some tips on how, if you're planning on getting an exotic car, what to do, what to stay away from, and how to set yourself up for success, and some of the key factors that you need to worry about. But before I do, if you could do me a huge favor and gently squeeze the like button for the YouTube algorithm, it helps me find more amazing people like yourselves that enjoy automotive content. Also, please consider subscribing. We post three times a week, so make sure you click the notification bell. And once again, follow us on Instagram at Lucky Lopez. We have a bunch of great stuff there. If you want to ask me questions about the car business, we do really fun stuff, a lot of uncensored content. If anybody knows anything about the automotive industry, we cuss like sailors, so I can't really be myself on this channel, but if you want to see me unfiltered, that's definitely the place to go. And let's go ahead and get in the video. So let's say you're watching your favorite YouTuber. He just broke 100,000 subscribers and he wants to celebrate with something really big, a statement piece. He wants to go buy his first exotic car to help grow his brand, to bring some more people to his channel, and to get his subscribers excited about his channel. He's got a new car. So this 25-year-old guy that's making, let's say, $200,000 a year, decides to go to Lamborghini and says, hey look, I got $100,000 down, I wanna buy this $300,000 Lamborghini, I make a bunch of money on YouTube, I'm famous, I think I'm cooler than what I really am, you should sell me this car. Nine times out of 10, probably I'd say 10 times out of 10, they're gonna say, absolutely not. YouTuber's gonna get discouraged. Well, what are you talking about? Look at all this money I make. Look at what I, how much money I'm putting down. You know, $100,000 is a lot of money. And they will still be told no and no and no. Most banks don't care if you have an 800 credit score. That's the biggest thing. I get so many people that are like, well, I got 800 credit score. I can get whatever I want. Not true. If you have an 800 credit score and you try to go buy a Lamborghini or Ferrari and you've never owned anything over $100,000 before, they're gonna turn you down. Oh, I got you know $100,000 down, that's a big chunk of money. Nobody's gonna turn me down, they will turn you down because you, you're too much of a credit risk and they don't trust you. I've seen people put 50% down on some of these Lamborghinis and still get turned down by traditional banks unless they go to predatory lending, which we're gonna mention here in a second. Now, the YouTuber gets discouraged. He's told no from multiple people. He goes from Ferrari to Lamborghini to Rolls Royce to Bentley and everybody's telling him no. Why is that? When it comes to getting an exotic car loan, like I said, your credit matters, but not as much as your history. We talk about bridge loans on this channel quite a bit. What a bridge loan is, is something that'll cover that gap between that $300,000 car that you bought and maybe that $30,000 car that you bought in college. Most car dealerships and most auto lending institutions will not let you jump from a $30,000 Honda Accord to a $300,000 Lamborghini, no matter how much rich and successful and famous you are. So a lot of YouTubers and professional athletes fall into this demographic. Now, there's a few ways around it. They do have creative financing where, you know, they can give you to put a bunch of money down, maybe 50, 60, 70%, and they'll take a risk on you, but it's gonna be extremely high interest, short term, and it's not gonna be favorable terms. The other way is, which the right way is, you get, like I said, a bridge loan. If you're only made, let's say, a $30,000 car loan, try to get a loan for $100,000. They may tell you yes, they may tell you no. Put 20 grand down, finance $80,000. Once you get 80,000, you're able to do double that. You can do maybe 150, $160,000 after that, and they'll keep doubling amount, your amount of money. Every time you go get a loan, just think about that. You're bracing yourself for another increase of payment. When it comes to these exotic type of cars, this is not something that is based just surely off of credit and surely off of income. They wanna make sure that you have the financials to take care of it, and they also wanna make sure that you're okay with paying you know, a three, four, five, six, seven thousand dollar car payment. That is definitely something that's very scary. People will make their house payments, people will make you know, certain other uh, uh, critical payments, but when it comes to an excessive six thousand dollar monthly car payment, eh, you know, they get a little nervous and so they don't wanna give that money to somebody just like this, like a 25 year old YouTuber or a 25 year old kid that just signed his contract and is the latest and greatest running back to come out of uh, college football. So what do they do? 
How do they get a car? How do they get to the exotic car realm without having to put 70% down, without having to put you know, a, a bunch of money down, coming up with documentation, or maybe getting a cheaper car, getting a starter Porsche, when they really want is maybe a Lamborghini Huracan or a 488 or I don't know, a Bentley Continental GT convertible, a brand new one. How do these guys get to that next step? It's from auto brokers. Now, not the traditional auto brokers you're thinking of. These are guys that prey on people like these YouTubers and professional athletes. Now, I will not disclose any names of companies or any names of YouTubers or professional athletes that I know because it is bad juju. I don't want, I don't want to tell you any of these people's names because it's none of their business. I just want to share some of the story so this way I can help educate you. And then also, I will never tell you the name of these companies because I don't want none of you guys going there trying to get a loan because I'm telling you, it is extremely predatory lending. They are super gangster with it. They will charge you a bunch of money, and if you don't make a single payment, they will show up to your house, knock on your door, and snatch that car out of your driveway. They will throw your grandma out of the car if they got you. That's how crazy these people are. So what these people, these auto brokers do, is they find people like these athletes, these YouTubers. Hey, buddy, I see that you, know, that you want to get a Lamborghini and you can't really afford it. I'll tell you what, I'll buy it for you. I'll take your $100,000 down, and I'll sell you this $300,000 car. Now, what they're not telling them is that they'll take that $100,000 and that'll almost be like a fee or they'll prepay for so many months. So this means that none of the money comes off the actual principal in the beginning. They'll say, well, this car's $300,000. I'm gonna charge you $60,000 on top of that for my buy fee, which most people that are desperate, that are excited, that wanna get these cars are okay with. And I'm telling you, these people will charge $60,000 I've seen them up to over 150,000 when the Cullinan was really big. All these rappers and everybody wanted to get these stupid Cullinans and these guys were literally charging $150,000 over retail and financing these guys. So they would add that in. So if you bought it for 350, they would charge you, I think it was like another 100,000. So let's say it's 450. You know, better, let's make it 500,000. Let's go for the full 150,000. On top of that, they're charging you interest. And it's never single digit interest. It's always double digit. Oh, I'm only gonna charge you 15%, bro. I'm not gonna charge you 20%. 15% on a 400 or $500,000 auto loan is insane. You're talking 10, $20,000 a month in some instances. And that's what these young athletes, YouTubers, and some of these other people fall into. So what do they do? They're so desperate, they wanna show off for their friends. They always show up with the cars. Hey, you could take this one right now, just sign this piece of paper, I'll give you the keys, insurance is paid for, it's part of your payment, blah, 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 just give me your money and you can drive away. And these suckers always do it. Now, I don't wanna make these people sound like they're stupid. A lot of them are, you know, they're desperate, they're excited, or maybe they're just from a financial background. You know, it's a 25 year old kid that just came out of college that, you know, this is the first time he's made a multi million dollar contract. You know, that's maybe a new professional athlete that doesn't really care to him, 500K with his $20 million contract is not gonna matter. Maybe it's this new kid that's a 25 year old YouTuber that makes $100,000 a month. So, in the scheme of things, he doesn't really care. It's just a write off for him. He's just gonna wanna buy it and pay it off. But there's these guys that live off of this stuff. And the worst thing is, is they're smart. They will never let you pay off the car because they know that people like you, living in the limelight, living in front of your friends, always wanting the flex, are always gonna want the next latest and greatest thing. So what they do is they say, hey, you know what? This Lamborghini Huracan is a 2020. Why don't I get you a 2022? Now that you paid for a whole year and you show me you're a good customer, all you have to do is give me $50,000 and I'll give you another one. What do these kids do? Sure, they give them 50 grand, they give them the old Huracan back, whatever they paid, they get zero trade-in for, that just goes to gravy and that guy sells it off to somebody else, gives it to the next YouTuber to get hooked, gives the YouTuber that's paying for a year a brand new one and now he's got him. Now for another whatever four or five years. And so this YouTuber's paying into the guy and they keep doing this every single year. And once they see that these YouTubers are not struggling to make payments or these professional athletes, these kids are, are becoming successful or they see they have a new contract coming up, guess what they do? Bro, you're doing great. I'm so proud of you. You deserve another car. You already have, a let's say, a Lamborghini Huracan. Why don't you get yourself a Rolls-Royce Cullinan or a Ghost? 
So this way you can take something around for the family or a Lamborghini Urus. So what do these guys do? I'll give you another one, no money down. Just make the payments, buddy, because you're my friend. And what do these kids do? They accept it. They take, them, they take the car, they start making those monthly payments, and then they got them on the hook again. And these guys will never let these guys go because they know that as long as they're paying them, they will never be able to get a legitimate loan to go ahead and finance it themselves. And they like the fact that they don't have to show documentation, they don't have to do anything. They get off on showing that they're a boutique lending institution, that they understand the YouTubers, they understand the professional athletes. You know, no questions, we know you're good, a handshake is all we need. When in the meantime, all they're doing is putting Sandy Vaseline and screwing you in the ass. And I hate to say it that way, but that's literally what they're doing. And the worst thing is, is if you have any type of financial problems, let's say as a YouTuber, I can attest to this. Sometimes you're making really good money for ad spend. Next month, it's about 50%. But what is if you have, maybe your channel gets demonetized, you get in trouble, something like that. They take your money away. Well, guess what happens? If you don't make your payment, there's not like, oh, well, like a regular bank, we'll give you a grace period, you can work with us. That payment is due that day. If you do not give it to them, they will show up and snatch your car up. And a lot of times they will snatch it up and they will charge you some crazy late fee. Like, hey, oh, it's, bro, it's like $5,000 late fee. You know, we trusted you, you made us look bad. They'll try to guilt these people into paying an extra $5,000 on their stupid payment or make them pay two payments in advance as a penalty. But even worse is if, let's say you can't make that payment. Let's say that maybe things have gotten really bad. You know, you can't take that asset if it's a regular loan and you could sell it and maybe keep the appreciation, you know, or whatever, not the appreciation, but whatever you paid off. No, these guys, they will snatch up that car and you will not get a dollar back. And then they'll wait around to see if you come back with your money. Now, let's say after two months, you get back on your feet. You're like, hey man, I, I had a bad rough two, three months. You know, I, I, I fell on my face, but I'm good now. Money's back together. I'm ready to go they'll get even more strict with you. Okay, no problem, we'll give you another car. Instead of that brand new Huracan, we're just gonna give you like a two, three-year-old Huracan. And then on top of that, you were paying like $8,000 a month for this Huracan. This one, this old one, you're gonna pay me 10K a month and I need $50,000 down. And after you pay that for a year, I'll go ahead and bump you back up again. And these kids fall for it over and over and over and over again. Now, there's a lot of management companies that do this. And this is how they trick some of these young YouTubers as well as professional athletes into getting their money and getting them to sign with them. So I didn't hear about a lot about the stuff about the YouTubers till recently, but I was shocked. When I go out and I do some of these, I guess, YouTuber events and I've emailed a few companies about asking about sponsorships and some of this other stuff, I've had some of these management companies reach out to me and I think they think I'm like a kid or something because the way they talk to me, you know, very disrespectful, they act like I don't know anything. Oh, if, if you want a car, you want this, you want a house, we'll do your bank account for you, we'll set up your LLC. I'm like, why do I need you to do that? I can do all that myself. Oh, but we do it for you so you don't screw it up. I was like, I have a CPA and attorney. I was like, I don't need you. And the more they realize that you're intelligent and you don't need them and you're not financially illiterate, there's some illiterate, they get scared. They know that they don't have power over you, so they stop talking to you. But I was shocked on how many of these YouTubers that I've met since I started my journey that you know got in these weird, crazy, shady management deals where they would sign their lives away. You know, just young kids, 18, 20 years old. You know, I just want to be famous. I just want to be on YouTube. They sign that contract. The management company gives them a house, gives them a car, gives them a little bit of an allowance. In the meantime. The management company is getting all the sponsorship money, all the YouTube ad revenue, and keeping all of it. And then at the very end of the the, uh, the session, the people are looking at it like, well, I made two hundred thousand dollars this month. And then YouTuber will be like, oh yeah, well, do I get my piece of the pie? Management company, sure you do. Here's five thousand bucks. And they're like, well, where's the rest of the money? Oh, well, I had to pay for the house. We had to pay for the car you're sitting in. Oh, plus all the expenses for your friends, your parties. Remember that trip you wanted to go on Mexico? We had to pay for all that and you had to pay for my trip down there. I mean, some crazy stuff. So when it comes to getting some of these 
uh, YouTubers getting their exotic car loans as well as professional athletes. That's what happens. So when you see a lot of these guys flexing on YouTube, look, I just bought this Lambo, it's mine, blah, blah, blah. They can even show you the registration. It doesn't mean shit. More than likely, they're getting gouged by one of these auto brokers that's completely taking advantage of them. So if you wanna do it right and you wanna get an exotic car, I'm gonna tell you a handful of things. One, which everybody freaking knows, pay your damn bills. Build your credit. At the end of the day, credit does matter when it comes to that part. Once you have that, you need to start getting auto loans. The highest auto loan you could possibly get. I tell a lot of people, go get a, you know, an $80,000 car, keep it for one year, trade it back in. If you, they want at least a one year history of an $80,000 loan. Once you get that, you'll be able to get a $150,000 to $200,000 car loan. Once you get that one, now you can get whatever you want. You have a, a proven track record of getting one of these uh, expensive car loans and you can show that you can pay this diligently without any issues. Now, another thing that's gonna freak out a lot of people is the insurance. When you're a younger guy and you're trying to get an exotic car, I remember back in the day, I think I was like in my mid 20s and I bought this like Bentley Continental GT. Holy shit, my insurance was ridiculous. I think I was paying like $1,100 a month back in the day, you know, and so, that's something that you need to make sure that you think about before you're purchasing this car. And then also the maintenance. As you guys know, everything on these cars are crazy expensive. So, you know, before you get into thinking that you're gonna flex like all these guys on YouTube and you wanna be a professional athlete and have the exact same cars as them, it is not all glitz, it's not all glamour, it's a lot of really bad predatory lending, it's a lot of people taking advantage of people that don't have any um, financial education, and it's a lot of money to put down. And especially if you don't know the cars, a lot of these dealers will take advantage of you. You know, like I always make jokes, people that wanna look expensive, that buy crazy cars, that wanna flex on YouTube, always buy old McLarens. The reason is, is dealers want to get rid of old McLarens because they cost too much to fix. A lot of these kids will buy these 30, 40,000 mile McLarens and they start blowing turbos, blowing transmissions, and they just get screwed over. So if you are a new YouTuber or you're a new professional athlete and you want to buy a car, think about what you're getting. If you can't afford a brand new one, make sure you get a certain amount of models that are really good. I tell everybody you can't go wrong with a Lamborghini Huracan or an Audi R8. Those two cars are very daily driven. Any Porsche you can get, great cars. You have far less problems with that. You want a great car, best bang for your buck to look like a baller on a budget, C8 Corvette. Those things are amazing, they look great, and a lot of times Chevy can step over the bounds and finance you that $100,000 if you at least have a $30,000 loan from them. That's one of the few companies that will actually step you up automatically. But get something like that. Don't jump into a McLaren, don't jump into a Rolls Royce, um, you know, you don't need none of that stuff. Just get something that you can really enjoy and have fun with. Anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on, you know, have you ever been uh, dealt with a predatory loan? Any of these guys that wanted to basically do like a rent to own program with you? Um, problems you've had with your exotic cars, maybe some of the banks that you prefer with uh, exotic car lending. I, all my loans are with Ally Finance. They do the best. They can do a lot of exotic cars up to 84 months. There's also a lot of leasing companies and as well as I think what's the other best one, it's probably gonna be your local credit union, believe it or not. Um, Navy Fed used to do really good loans, but they're very picky now. Unless you've been with them for at least two years, they will not do an exotic car loan. They're very picky, but if you are, try to refinance with them. They'll give you, uh, I think the best is like a 3.5% on a $200,000 loan. But anyways, but I want to thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next video.